right, continuing on with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We find it in Matthew chapter 6. Um, we started off reading uh, last week, those section right before it, where he's teaching us how not to pray. And then he says in verse 9, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's where we've come to today. Give us this day our daily bread. If you're anything like me, you grew up and you still have this habit of pretty much any time you eat, especially as a family, you pray. You say grace. That's what we call it. Um, growing up, we had almost the same prayer pretty much every night. Uh, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hand, we all are fed. Uh, thank him now for daily bread. I may have misspoke a word or two there, um, but pretty much that thing. And you could just rattle it off and you know, it would feel rote, like you were just kind of sitting there smelling your food, ready to eat, and you weren't even thinking about what it is you, you, you were saying. It was just, I know I have to say this, and I'll probably feel guilty if I go eating without saying it, you know, even make jokes of like, oh, is the food really do us any good if we didn't say grace beforehand? Ha, 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 ha. And um, yeah, that sort of thing can definitely become just rote or routine or mindless, uh, superstitious maybe even. But as we see here, as Jesus teaches us to pray, and therefore as he's teaching us how we should relate to God, our Heavenly Father, we see that stopping to give thanks for food every time we eat it just makes perfect sense. Thanking God who provides for us makes perfect sense. All right, so even if it is routine, it's a great habit to have. But this this petition, this idea of give us today our daily bread, isn't really just about what do you say right before you eat a meal. No, it's, it's not even mainly about that. It's, it's teaching us that we utterly depend on God for everything. You and I are what we like to call creatures. You know what that means? We have a creator. That means we didn't make ourselves. We don't have our own beginning. Uh, you and I, uh, we have life, not because we like suddenly just said, I want to exist, because we came into existence. Uh, all of creation is actually like that. It wasn't like, and we're going to do it now. Life finds a way. It was like, no, God, who is eternal and infinite and has life in himself, who has no beginning, has no cause, gave us life. And so we depend on him. We depend on him for, for, the, for life from the very beginning. We depend on God for just daily life. The life, the breath you woke up with this morning, the way you're sustained day by day, the seasons as they come and as they rotate through where winter turns into spring, into summer, into fall, that all comes from God. And so Jesus reminds us that we pray to God for our daily bread because we depend on him for everything. If God does not sustain us, we are doomed. And yet, that's not a scary place to be. It could sound scary to be like, unless this one person sustains you, you're a goner. You'd be like, oh, no, no, if that was any normal person. But to know that God, our Heavenly Father, is the one who sustains us and is providing everything for us according to his wisdom, that's actually a really comforting place to be. So we don't have to freak out when we pray. We know we have needs. We know we have daily things that need to be provided for us, whether it's uh, bread and meals and life, or whether it's other things, help with school, help with friends, help with family, help with whatever needs we have. God is lovingly providing for us. We don't need to freak out about it. Jesus teaches us to take our needs and our concerns to God, but he doesn't dwell much time on it. Right? He just says, you know what? Give us today our daily bread. And then he moves on right, with some other, what we might call deeper concerns. So we start our prayer focusing on our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We spend three times as much time praying for God's will in our lives. And then we say, oh, for us, for our needs, give us our daily bread. You're our good father. You take care of us. And so you lift those needs up, but you don't obsess over them. You don't freak out about it. So this is really a simple prayer because we are so dependent on God. 
And now it's worth also just noticing what God is, how God answers this prayer. This prayer isn't give us today our daily berries. Give us today our daily food that I went out and hunted, right? It's nothing we provide just really simply. It's always, it's, it's bread. I mean, bread takes a lot of work to get to you. Even if you make your own bread, where do all those ingredients come from? Where did the recipe come from, right? Turns out it's probably this thing that's been passed on through cultures and we've learned as uh, humanity, as a species, how to make bread. That's not true of anyone else. Uh, the thing that goes into bread being provided for us is this huge human history. It's this whole society and supply chain we live in where right now I go to the store. Uh, I don't go to the store too often, right? We have to social distance, um, but I, I, I buy it. And so there's cashiers involved. There's someone who owns hy V or Costco or wherever I'm getting it from. There's uh, people who make the bread. There's a hundred thousands of people involved in God providing for me and for you, your daily bread or whatever else he's providing for you. This is what we call providence. The way God is working and orchestrating and being God over the whole world. Every little detail he's over and he's working that for the care of his people, of his children. So that's what we could pray. Give us this day our daily bread. But as we come here and as we move through what's called Holy Week, right, this week between Jesus is entering Jerusalem and going to uh, the cross on Good Friday and then rising from the dead on Easter, it's good to remember that we don't live on bread alone. Jesus, in fighting a temptation of the devil, quoted Deuteronomy saying that, yeah, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And Jesus himself says in John, in the, in the Gospel of John in chapter 6, he calls himself the bread of life. It's not a bread that you just eat once and then you're hungry, right? You may have had the greatest meal of your life, but a few hours later, you're going to be hungry. But feasting on Jesus, the life that he offers, the bread of his flesh and the, 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 the wine, I guess we'd say, of his, his blood, uh, Jesus says that sustains us and satisfies us forever. Right? It's not like the manna that came down in the wilderness for the Israelites back when they were wandering through the, through the wilderness. He says, this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread, he says in chapter 6, verse 51 of John's gospel. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. God sustains us in more ways than just not growing hungry today uh, and not physically dying. God has cared for us. He has shown his fatherly care for us in the fact that Jesus has been sent to, to take on flesh and to suffer and to die in our place so that we may have life and may have it abundantly. And we have that in Jesus. And so even when we go through trials, even when we go through times and places when maybe the bread isn't as plentiful as we'd like, we are still still sustained through Jesus. I read this verse last week, but Habakkuk 3:17 says, "Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the ye fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and the be there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. In other words, even when the daily bread that God provides is withheld for that day or for that season, he is still good and he provides what he needs. Our joy is found not in the daily provisions he gives, but in what he provides. So here this week, be thinking, what are you thankful for? Just take note of all the way God is just graciously, gently caring for us, providing all our needs in way more, even during this kind of stressful, maybe even frightening, genuinely hard and challenging season we're in right now. Take note of all the ways God is caring for us. Continue to cast those cares on him. But then take note of the deeper, uh, the deeper satisfaction that God has given us in Christ 
That's what we're actually to meditate on this week. The way God, Jesus gave himself as that living bread for us to feast on when he willingly and obediently walked to the cross to pay for our sins. I say it every day. I'm looking forward to being together physically one of these days. It is a joyful time that when I start thinking about it, it gets me kind of giddy, but I don't know when that will be. So I hope you're doing well. Please pass along any prayer requests or just if you want to talk, I'd love to receive some messages. So take care.